Hi, I'm David Northey, Head Professional at Castle Hill Country Club. This short program has been designed to help you understand course care. With your help, we can all keep Castle Hill to its highest possible standard. Okay, almost every time you hit the green, you will make a lob mark. Let's head up to the green and I'll introduce you to Martin Black, our course superintendent, who will show you how to fix one properly. Thanks Dave. There's two different types of lob marks that we've got to deal with. The first is basically just an indentation, which is caused by a high lofted shot into the green, and that's the one we'll deal with first off. So with the indentation, importantly, you can use AT or the lob mark repairer. A lot of people don't carry one of these, so the humble T is just as good in repairing this damage. So you work your way around the indentation, usually in three or four different spots is sufficient. Tap it down, then with the, the base of your putter is one of the best tools to use, and just tap that back down fairly firmly, and that is instantly playable. Okay, now the second one we've got to deal with is what they call the tearing pitch mark. This is where the ball's actually gone through the surface of the putting green and it's absolutely critical that these are repaired correctly because these ones take at least four times to repair as compared to the indentation. So the first move is critical and the first move you move is in the opposite direction to which the ball's entered the green. So the ball's come through in this direction. So the first move is at the back of the lob mark where the turf's been pushed up. So you push that back in and then you work your way around the lob mark, addressing all damaged sections, lifting as you go and pushing in using the bottom of your thumb, finger and the T. Once you've achieved that, once again, as with the indentation, pat down firmly with the bottom of the putter and the job's done. An incorrectly repaired lob mark can take up to four weeks longer to repair. The most common mistake people make is they, they come in there and they think they're doing the right thing and all they're doing is bringing up the dirt. You can see there's no turf there at all. And then they tap that down and they think they've done a good job. But you can see the scar there is quite substantial. Castle Hill Country Club has some of the best fairways in Sydney. Here is a little information which can help make them even better. No matter what level of golfer you are, from time to time you will take a divot, whether it's on the fairway or on the teeing ground. Here's a little information to help speed up the turf's recovery. Okay, so Dave's taken a fairly substantial divot here. It's quite a deep divot as we call it. So what Dave will do now, he'll pick up the more solid pieces of turf and replace them in the divot hole. He'll push them down with his foot pretty firmly. And then he probably want to give it a light sprinkle of sand just to finish the job off. And that's how we work with a, a deep divot. Sometimes when you take a deep divot, the turf disintegrates and it's not any substantial stuff to replace. So in this instance, we would cut around the edge of the divot using the club you used. Okay, so Dave's going to show us how to chop in the side of the divot now using firm chopping action with the club and then a light sprinkling of sand and speeds in the recovery process. So this divot that Dave's taken is uh, more of a thin divot, hasn't damaged the turf substantially. So all that's required here is to put a little bit of sand in to fill that hole. But most importantly, you don't overfill the sand divots. The machinery is really expensive and it'll damage the blades if you put too much sand in. So you've got to finish the sand flush with the existing turf cover. When on a par three, like I am here, please take a generous scoop of sand to fill the divot that you've left. Making sure you smooth it over to promote regeneration of the grass. 
Likewise, if you find another divot, please fix that as well. Here at Castle Hill Country Club, we have 71 bunkers around the golf course. I'll introduce Martin to show us how to fix the bunkers correctly. Thanks Dave. The first thing to remember when you're dealing with bunkers at Castle Hill, never ever enter the bunker from the high points. There are many bunkers that have steps for access. Please use these at all times. In the absence of steps, make sure you enter the bunker at the lowest point. All right, you've played your shot. First thing to do, get rid of your club. You can't repair the bunker properly unless you've got two hands to use the rake. The rakes are designed specifically for two different purposes. It has teeth on one side, smooth edge on the other. That becomes important when you're trying to repair the damage correctly in the interest of your following players. All right, so you bend down low, you use the rake in this sort of fashion, backwards and forwards, to get your foot marks smoothed. Importantly, you, you try not to drag the sand away from the base of the bunker. That's why you use the backward motion to push the sand back, so you're not left with a big pile of sand at the entry point. Ensure you get all your foot marks. When you get towards the outside of the bunker, using the back of the rake, push the sand back in like so, and that stops the build-up of the sand near the edge and also creating the convex base, which is always difficult to play out of. Return the rake, handle facing the line of play for easy use next time. With proper bunker etiquette, this situation can be avoided. Like all golf clubs, slow play is a major issue. Here are a few tips to help speed up your round of golf and make it more enjoyable for all players. When teeing off, the shorter hitters should hit first. Please keep position directly behind the group in front. Here at Castle Hill, we have compulsory call up on all par threes. Please use the safety zones provided. Whilst on a green, please line up your putt whilst others are putting theirs. This can save 20 minutes on a round. Please don't mark your scorecard on the green. Wait till you get to your next tee to do so. When using the sprig bar, please grab your food and drinks and promptly move to the next tee. Sitting down at the table eating your food and drinks will result in congestion of the field. A reasonable time to play at Castle Country Club is no longer than 4 hours 15 minutes. If we can follow these slow play tips, everyone on the course will benefit. Here at Castle Hill Country Club, we have over 70 golf carts, so obviously cart safety is of high priority. Please do not drive a cart within 10 metres of tees, greens, ponds and bunkers at any time. Only two persons at one time to travel in a cart. Never ride on the bumper bars as it may result in injury or damage to the cart. Castle Hill has many cart paths. Please use them when provided. Please be aware whilst driving a cart in the car park, there are other cars on the road. We would very much appreciate these rules to be followed. At Castle Hill, we are very fortunate to have a good quality driving range. Remember, if you're a longer hitter, please refrain from using your driver as it may result in injury or damage and use your irons only. Here we are next to a Medialert. These are located through many positions on the golf course. 
Please bear in mind these are for emergency use only and not to be used for broken down buggies or lunch orders. Whether or not you are playing competition or socially, please report to the pro shop 15 minutes prior to your hit off time. If for some reason you cannot play, please remember to call the pro shop to cancel. Alternatively, you can cancel online at a minimum of 24 hours before your allotted tea time. And remember, the staff and myself are here to help with all your golfing needs. We hope this short program helps you better understand course care at Castle Hill Country Club. See you on the course.